left behind as eight teams compete for a coveted silver prize. The league's top scorer is a kicker who sometimes passes up the opportunity to boot. Ever have one of those days? Well, don't let feathers. There's help awaiting in the USFL. goodbye to the Federals, who next season fly south to Miami. And in the glare of their season finale with New Orleans, the Fed's Eric Robinson sets the stage for a fantastic farewell. But Washington has a way of parlaying promise into poverty. And if nothing else, it's made them a wiser team. The Breakers haven't exactly handled things any better during their five straight losses. But it seems that no matter what kind of break Washington gets, frustration prevails as a sign of the times. Leading 7 to nothing, Johnny Walton has his play in short-circuited by Washington's Mike Guess. And this time, the Federals cash it in. Quarterback Mike Hohensee playing with a severely sprained wrist ties the score with a 41-yard strike to Mike Harris. Hohensee then looks to the venerable Joey Walters, and the Feds are on the move. In the third quarter, Curtis Bledsoe gives Washington a 14-10 advantage. And minutes later, Joey Walters makes it a 10-point lead with his 98th catch of the year. Breakers coach Dick Corey isn't too keen on trailing the league's losing his team. And he's given momentary relief in the final quarter thanks to fullback Mark Shaleen. With quarterback Doug Woodward now setting the pace, New Orleans moves in range on the quick feet of Marion Brown. The Feds have been down this road before. But Woodward's challenge is rebuffed through the guesswork of a guy named Mike. And the Breakers tumble for the sixth straight week. The Feds' 2017 win is just their third all year. But it's a fond farewell to a city that for two years they called home. Despite the Federal's woes, one of their most consistent performers was defensive back Mike Guess. The three-year veteran, who didn't start until the midway point last year, started every game this season and led the team in tackles. He also set a club record with 11 interceptions, second best in the league. All-American from Ohio State even had two thefts called back. And if points were awarded for acrobatic style, well, guess who'd win? The Washington Federals are no more. But for the fans behind the men in green, the cat-quick coaching of my guess is a memory worth holding on to. Yeah, it was a long season and a trying one, but um, we came through the trying times, and though we're only 3-15, and 15, I'm sure a lot of guys learned a lot from this experience. The Feds certainly weren't the best of teams. In fact, they barely avoided the worst seasonal record in pro football history. There were times during the year they too could have bagged it, like when their former owner likened them to rodents, or when the stark nakedness of empty seats stared back blankly into faces aching for support. 
Most frustrating of all, though, were those games they played their hearts out, only to have something inevitably go wrong. So many of the losses came by just a few points uh, and were lost late in the ball game. Uh, it was really uh, heartbreaking, uh, but you sort of uh, get steeled against that sort of thing after a while. But to the small, loyal following that supported them, the Federals were no ordinary losing team. They endeared themselves in such a way that no matter what uniform they wear next season, their first fans will never let go. I wish them lots of luck. I know they're in Miami, they're going to be representing Miami, but they're still going to be my team. So the feds bid adieu to Washington and look forward to a renaissance in the sun. Yeah, I'm going to be calling, but uh, right now I need a long rest. <laughs> Keeping Steve Spurrier's Tampa Bay Bandits guessing is the ploy of Birmingham's Riley Dutch. As he rests, starting stallion quarterback flips out and gives backup Bobby Lane a chance to clear the cobwebs. With Birmingham already having clinched the division title, Lane has nothing to lose. But he does have plenty to gain, with Jim Smith on the other end of his passes. Lane also finds Joe Cribbs a receptive target. But it's when Cribs goes his own way do the Stallions gallop to a 7-0 lead. Tampa also dips into its reserves, calling on Jimmy Jordan in the second half. And the Florida State criminology grad solves the mystery of the Stallion defense. Jordan zeroes in on Willie Gillespie to give the Bandits a 14-10 lead. But down by seven late in the game, Lane locates backup tight end Robin Earl, who dukes his way to the potential equalizer. But the Birmingham celebration is short-lived, as Tampa's Walter Carter deals a winning hand on the extra point, and Tampa survives the playoff warm-up 17-16. And now, on to the main event. A full house could be in the cards this week in Birmingham when the Stallions turn their not-so-secret weapon loose against Tampa in their Eastern Conference playoff showdown. The Bandits have a game-breaker of their own in Gary Anderson, whose 21 touchdowns was best in the league. Cliff Stout overcame a shaky start to become the league's second-rated passer, and nobody gained more yards receiving than Jim Smith. Tampa's John Reeves passed for more than 4,000 yards this year, but you never know who's going to do what in the wide-open style of bandit ball. One thing's for certain, nobody will be pulling any punches when Tampa and Birmingham square off, Southern style, in round one of the playoffs.